Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe of Living Streams International bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. David Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair at the Life Cathedral behind Zenith College. And we meet on Sundays and we meet on Wednesdays in the evenings. Sundays in the mornings and then Wednesdays in the evening. Um, this, this morning I'll capture my thoughts in, with the words, um, I have a dream. In Genesis chapter 41, especially verse 15 onwards, you remember that um, Pharaoh had a dream and that particular dream of Pharaoh no one else could interpret that dream and they had to call Joseph a dreamer to come speak into the dreams of Pharaoh so a dreamer was invited to speak into another man's dream and not just to speak into another man's dream but another S and I'll, I'll, that will unfold later to speak into the dreams of another man and then to, for another S into the dream, S like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, F, you know, Q, R, S. That was it. Now, if you remember, the story of Joseph is a, is a story of dreams, a dreamer. In actual fact, if you remember, he had a dream, the first dream, he saw the sun, he saw they were in a field, and then uh, his sheep stood up, and then his brother's sheep just bowed and, and, and worshipped him. And then the next dream uh, was, you know, he saw the sun, moon, and stars, you know, bound before him, powerful dreams and dreams that will make somebody very pompous and proud and uh, walk with their uh, head in, in the air and probably feet not on the ground. Now, Joseph was a dreamer and all throughout his life, it was his dream, 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 dream. He was a dreamer. He had visions, he had goals, he had aspirations. God was laying out his future before him through dreams. And I've already explained what those dreams were. But guess what? Now here is a dreamer, then another dreamer comes, and that dreamer is Pharaoh, a big man. And then Joseph was invited to speak into the dream of, of Pharaoh. And for me, that's very interesting. Now immediately Pharaoh, um, he, had, he had spoken into the dream, then Joseph went a second step. He said, Pharaoh, look for somebody to save your dream. I mean, Pharaoh, this is the interpretation of your dream. I'm speaking into your dream. But you need more than somebody to speak into your dream. You need somebody, somebody to serve your dream. And uh, Pharaoh said, wow, let this person serve my dream. Can you believe this? A dreamer burying his dream to serve somebody's dream. Now, he had dreams of his own. And he had dreams of grandeur. He had dreams of, of power. He had royal, regal dreams. Dreams of splendor. Dreams that were, were mind-blowing. Sun, moon, and stars. But then he had come to a place where God had taught him that the pathway to the reality or the realization of your dream is to serve somebody else's dream. Joseph said, listen, Pharaoh, I'm a dreamer too. He could have told him, I'm a dreamer too. In fact, I dreamed this and this and that and that. You know, he never mentioned it once. He just said, said, sir, look for somebody who would serve your dreams. And in offering himself to serve Pharaoh's dreams, his dream became a reality. The dreams of Joseph were twofold. Number one, the, his sheep standing up. I've already explained it. That talks about the harvest. That everybody was going to have their harvest but his harvest was going to stand up. And his harvest was not just going to stand up. His harvest was going to serve the harvest of his brothers. Because the kingdom principle is the greatest, is the servant. So his harvest was going to serve the harvest of his brothers. That's the first dream. The first dream was purpose. The second dream was placement. And like I said, it was Egypt. Sun, moon, and stars. The highest gods in Egypt, the sun god and the, and the, and the moon goddess. And now guess what? The Egyptians were uh, stargazers. They built their pyramids according to the constellation of the stars. Or they were stargazers. So God was saying the geography for your dream is in Egypt. 
But see, the pathway by which he, his dream became a reality, he chose to serve. He chose to bury his dream. He chose not to be affected by the splendor and the, and the, and the, and the pomposity of his dream and, the, and all the glamour and the glitter of his dream, the glitzy part of his dream. He said, Pharaoh, I'd like to serve your dream. In serving Pharaoh's dream, he became the biggest fish in the whole of Egypt. And guess what? His harvest served the harvest of his brothers. And truthfully, everybody bowed before him. Sun, moon, and stars bowed before him. So guess what? I have a dream. And so you have a dream. But sometimes God brings us to the place for us to bury our dream. Not for it to die. Your dream won't die. But the pathway for your dream becoming a reality is the service. It's an offering your service for another man's dream. In serving somebody else's dream, your dream becomes a reality. Too many people are walking around, I have a dream, I have a dream. I have a dream, I have a dream. And your dream will never see reality unless you walk the road of service. Service to another man's dream. He that is faithful in another man's vineyard or he that is faithful in another man's business would also have his own and trusted to him. Guess what? Elisha getting the double was by pouring water seven Elijah. Sometimes we're too high. Sometimes we're too pompous. Sometimes we're too heady and high-minded and think that we are it. In actual fact, we're not. And many times your destiny or your success story is delayed or the narrative of your story becomes murky and the narrative of your story ends in failure not because of anything, but you refuse to place down your dreams at the feet of somebody else's dream. In serving somebody's dream, your dream becomes a reality. You know what? God is not looking for captains. He's looking for servants. See you later.